Hello my soccer universe. This tournament is so incredibly fast paced that we are already in the round of 16 with no rest in between. It's really really crazy and I have to say that today's day, while I said from the beginning of the World Cup, still stand by it that I'll support the Netherlands and Argentina, who will not play against each other, which yeah, does not really work out for me quite well. At least I've won in the semi-final. Uh, all four teams that played today, I actually always had a like and a support for them. Australia has been for a long time one of my favorite countries and one country I thought I will eventually live in. And I have lived in the United States and, you know, um, my daughter was born there, I got married there. So, <sighs> was really, really tough to cheer against the two. However, I have to say that when the games went on, I think the cynical mind of me took over because uh, neither the United States nor, the Austra nor Australia would have had a chance to win the title. So in, in a cynical fashion, then I said, okay, let's go for the two big favorites uh, in there. However, uh, when both games became tight and both games had kind of late drama, there was a chuckle in me and a little bit of enjoyment. Let's see. Let's see what the big boys are made of. Can they uh, weather the storm that the smaller teams uh, throw up to them? So uh, it was very interesting in that sense. But Netherlands and Argentina move on. And I, I would say we, uh, we briefly talk about the two games. I mean, Netherlands, uh, U USA, it was Overall, especially in the first half, a super even game. Not many chances in there. However, I always felt that, especially as the US started out really well uh, and had a big chance through uh, Christian Pulisic, or in the second minute, that he has to bury. Because it happens what happens when you don't bury the chances against the favorite. The Dutch come down the field and with their first chance, Dumfries plays at the Depay. It was uh, actually a well-worked attack, and it's 1-0 for the Dutch. Timothy Weah, kind of towards the end of the first half, has a really good chance that was uh, well saved. Also, got to be saved. was a good, good save by Knop uh, Knoppertz or whatever. I, I will not remember that dad name until he saves pro probably a few penalties in the shootout. Let's see about that. It's going to not get ahead of it. Again. The US could have equalized right there. And then Daily Blind just before the half. Uh, again, Denzel Dumfries, who had actually been receiving quite the criticism at back home, converts and it is 2-0. And it was smooth sailing from there on. I think in the second half, I gotta say for I had the feeling that the Dutch had the game more or less under control until uh, Haji Wright came on for McKenney. Ho missed another sitter, a chance that he has to make, and then a few minutes later he actually makes the goal. But you know, it was a cross by Polisic that he somehow gets the touch on with his heel, and it takes like this great lob over the go over the goalkeeper into the net. Okay, two one, game on. And I thought, yeah, maybe the US are now pressing, and this will be an interesting. Game. Maybe we'll get him overtime. No. Nope, the Dutch come on uh, up, up again. Blind crosses in, and Tim Fries makes crowns his man of the match performance. And yeah, the Dutch. I think it was, from my perspective, the best performance of the Dutch in this tour to tournament. But it was still very much the defensive Dutch. Uh, it is so funny that over the past ten years, roughly speaking. The Dutch, maybe even longer, the Dutch have been slowly transforming. I actually, I want to say even, uh, we can go 15 years or so back. The Dutch have been devolving in a way, in a more defensive and more pragmatic outfit, whereas my Italians uh, went from a solid defensive outfit in a more attacking one. And see how the fortunes have changed in a way, which is just weird. Uh, I don't like seeing the Dutch uh, playing that that way. On the other side, I actually would like them to see to see them lift a trophy finally. So uh, in that sense, uh, take it what it is. 
I think the final score is a little bit harsh on the, on the United States, who actually, I think they had a, this was the first game where I actually really, well, maybe against England, but you know, I didn't see the whole England game, but uh, where, where they saw they had a, a full performance, it's just that the Dutch were ruthless and completely took uh, the US apart. And you could see that, you know, some inexperience in there, maybe that's some valuable experience because, you know, the next World Cup, the US have already qualified. And it will be played on home turf, so uh, that might actually be a big one. Going over to the other game between Australia and Argentina. Um, first, I thought that the headline will surely be in this one that patience paid off for Argentina because it was a game to be patient at first. Um, Argentina enjoying all the, all the possession, Australia just hanging back. We are defending, we are defending, we don't need to do much more, we are defending, let's hold out as much as we can. And Argentina didn't even have a real shot on goal, I think it was one by Papu Gomez that went just way over and, and on the side. Uh, it was even funny that Australia had the first corner kick of the game. Uh, so in that sense, it was really one where, where as soon as your students have possessions, Argentina tried to stifle them as quickly as possible to gain ball back. We are not going to get caught on a counter-attack like Denmark did. And then we tried to launch an attack which never really worked out. Until there was a free kick on the right side that uh, Leo Messi takes. It is cleared. Um, ball comes back to, uh, to Messi, who then plays it to McAllister, who plays it into the box. I guess it was already meant to go back to Messi. However, it is Otamendi who... This controls the ball right in the path of Messi, who just threads it into the net. Brilliant goal. Gotta got, got be saying, really, really nicely uh, played. At that point, just out of interest. Not that I'm in uh, danger of buying it, just out of interest. Said, How much, uh, you know, is the Argentina shirts available still on the Adidas page? Yes. Messi names it? No. Any other Argentinian player you can get? Messi? No. So. And it's also to the point, is there any Argentinian player that one would uh, like to get? Mm, no, <laughs> it is all about Messi. So there are other Messi names that seemingly. Uh, it was a well-deserved lead for Argentina, uh, but the game was not the greatest. It was really um, just keep it calm, just keep it tight and don't get caught on a counter-attack. The second half, I found a little bit interesting that the change that came in the 50th minute where Lisandro Martinez came off for Papu Gomez, kind of already you changed the uh, tactics a little bit and I think Argentina actually ended up paying a little bit for that. The go they get the second goal through Julian Alvarez where uh, the, the Paulo, who actually I think was one of the better players of, the, of, of this Argentina. Anything that was dangerous or whatever, I, I really really liked how he, he, he was playing. He was pressing uh, the Australian goalie, who then spills the ball to Julian Alvarez, uh, who can put it into internet. It's 2 0. And honestly, from that moment on, it was smooth sailing, or so one thought. Because for the next 10 minutes, Australia didn't do anything, Argentina had control. However, Messi uh, tried, but he never could get off a shot. You know, it never really worked then out to get a shot on goal or to create a chance. And then, out of nowhere, Goodwin takes a shot that gets uh, deflected by Enzo Fernandez into his own net. Game on. Literally game, game on. And then suddenly, as cool, calm and collected as Argentina seemed up until that point, it suddenly went all away. They got nervous again. Uh, there was um, a run by Behic uh, who just went through like Messi the, the defense where Alessandro Martinez makes a great tackle because that would have probably been the 2-2. Uh, but Argentina realized that and said, okay, we need to go for a third, third goal. And then the, it, the, the game became really dramatic um, with Lautaro Martinez being twice, being beautifully assisted by Messi and not getting the shot in. Messi taking another shot that just missed by, by, by a little bit. Argentina really tried to score at this point. They said, okay, we need the third to go. We need to kill off this game. But whatever they did, they couldn't get it. They literally couldn't get it. And uh, there was a seven minute stoppage time where I think they controlled six minutes of those. Only the last minute. Cool came on. Uh, he had, had come, come, come on, a uh, young kid, uh, 71st minute came on, and then he had the big chance 
Emmy Martinez saves. And Argentina through. I don't want to say by the skin of their teeth because they literally control it, but uh, at the end of the game, their defense looked so vulnerable that with all the great things that they have done before, I gotta say, Argentina is not a team that I'm trusting to win the World Cup right, right now. And I think if the Dutch can uh, repeat their performance and can stay defensively sound, the Dutch will give Argentina a real month for a run for, for, for the money, which is something I did not expect on the honest day. I thought that uh, our Argentina will be just too, too good for the Dutch. On the other side, they have not quite a few uh, days to prepare because um, there is a break. The game will be played. I think it's next it's the upcoming Friday, if I see it correctly. Uh, just let me check, it's on the 9th of December. So there is almost a week up until then, where actually the teams can do some work. And uh, that's the other thing. So far, um, many teams had to use the group stage to kind of get themselves going and build the squad. Now we're getting to the point where I think the good teams will finally start to look like something. And maybe now this almost six days until that uh, next quarterfinal, that might actually work wonders for Argentina and the Dutch. Uh, as you see here in the bracket, it went as expected. The two favorites move on and they will then, whoever wins that one, will face the winner of Croatia against Brazil. Um, I want to use this opportunity to also say, and this was a little bit of a tradition uh, that I started the last World Cup to say goodbye to the United States. As I said, who had a, um, I think, over a successful tour to tournament. I didn't necessarily expect them to go out of the group. And against the better teams, England and the Netherlands, they actually played quite well, especially the way they controlled England was really impressive, which makes actually this Dutch performance to me even more impressive uh, in a way. And for Australia, they reached more than they could ever imagine. They got two wins at this World Cup. Even the Golden Generation from 2006 only got four points. They got two wins. This is an absolute amazing feat for a team that honestly, and I include myself in that, I said they are one of the teams that should actually not be there. They're definitely among the weakest teams. So um, big applause to them and... Goodbye, US. Goodbye, Australia. I think you both enriched this tournament uh, and gave us good stories. So the idea is, as you can see here, uh, that I fill the backside here with the quarterfinal matches, although I haven't thought this out because on the last match day, one of those um, have to be removed in any case. Let's look at the favorites after after this. Um, Argentina get a little bit close to Brazil thanks to moving on. We already see that uh, Argentina is a little bit more than 60% favorite over the Dutch uh, who are in there as well. Uh, Portugal have dropped a little bit because now I also managed to get the FIFA ratings in. So uh, that's all that there is to it. And we have the next matches uh, tomorrow, France against Poland. I would fully expect France to win that one because uh, Poland have tried to not participate in this tour tournament as good as they could and still managed to move on. And I think England against Senegal is a very, very interesting one. I actually chose the away jerseys for that because I don't have a green Senegal jersey. So I just have a little bit of a contrast here. So that's what is tomorrow. I think this could be an interesting. I mean, the European matchups have usually been good, uh, and I really want to see if France can bounce back. And African champions against European vice champ champions. That sounds rather appealing. So I'm um, looking forward there. I we may see our first overtime. I would think. And I guess that's it from me for. Uh, first set of the round of 16 uh, please let know what you thought about the games today and how you see it going uh, move moving forward give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and i will talk to you soon bye hey there i really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so to get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe and with that have a wonderful day bye